Well, how about it? My calendar says 13 weeks are in the books. The regular season has come and gone, yet we are still here to serve you, the college football viewer on the ESPN College Football YouTube channels. We always do every Sunday the recap. Myself, Paul Feinbaum. Paul, uh, it wasn't it? It was just Labor Day weekend. I swear it. it you know, it happens. All, I think because uh, and obviously you're doing, you're, you're you're deeping, you're going deeper into the night than I am, or the early morning. But uh, it does go. I think there's so much happening, and and you know, some weeks are pretty dull, and then so, then we have this past weekend when you really can't quite figure it out. So uh, it, it's it, it the the NFL never ends. So it's hard to say that season flies by. College football is very finite. And I think that's why it's so exciting. Yeah. Let, let's peel back. It's because it's Thanksgiving weekend. There it's, there's a pretty much a week's worth of football. You got some action in there. I had the egg bowl on Thursday night and you get into the Friday stuff. So I kind of just want to peel back the entirety of the weekend. That was, I want to start with the egg bowl between Mississippi and Mississippi state, the heavy rumors going into that game, even up until kickoff was that Lane Kiffin was out. He was headed to Auburn. I met with him during the week. He didn't really give us any indication either way, but didn't say that he wasn't going at the time. And uh, here we have it. They lose four of five to end the season. Mike Leach gets his first win against Lane Kiffin. And now Lane's staying at Ole Miss. Yeah, I mean, of all the statements made publicly, and that's all we know, you you may have heard some privately, uh, the most ridiculous, Matt, is what Lane Kiffin said yesterday, that uh, he did not announce – he did not. I'll try to say this without breaking down into hysteria. Uh, he did not announce that he was staying at Ole Miss before the game because he thought it might adversely affect his team. Now, I don't understand what that means. It seems like if, if you're about to play the biggest game of the year and you say, guys, I've been offered a job, but I'm staying here. Bam. Yeah, right. Uh, I mean, that's total BS. And I mean, only Lane Kiffin could could not only say that, but until this conversation, get away with it. Cause I know people go, Oh yeah, well, you're right. Like, and then he continues to uh, attack a reporter uh, who reported that he was leaving on Friday, which was a, a major mistake. Nobody was any, with any understanding as you well know, would have been, le- he would not have been leaving Friday, but with Cadillac Williams coaching Saturday, but um, Lane can't stay out of his way. In the end, this stuff goes away very quickly. Ole Miss I'm sure is happy to have him. Uh, the end of the season was an absolute uh, disaster. Uh, and guess what? Lane Kiffin gets paid. So does he really care? It's his third extension since arriving yeah. at Oxford. Oh, by the way, in case you're keeping track in three seasons, the yeah. thing that I've learned over the past 72 hours that I need Jimmy Sexton as my agent so that I can be rumored to go everywhere and then just keep getting incremental pay raises to stay where I'm at. Yeah. I mean, Jimmy Sexton, um, uh, doesn't even have to try anymore to humiliate athletic directors. I mean, he just does it in his sleep uh, and he does it everywhere. I, I mean, it, and he takes no prisoners. It doesn't matter where you are. He will make you look foolish. And, and this is I, now that we know Lane staying probably neither here nor there, but there was that report going around that there was a, there was a meeting. He called a team meeting mm. on uh, Tuesday night to let them know what was going on. That report I can refute because Lane told me what happened Every week, there's a what they have a, a like a players only meeting with some of the staff or some of the assistant where they just kind of go over things for the week, how everybody's just kind of a get together. Lane never goes to that, never speaks at that. That meeting was going on Tuesday because of the reports that were out there. Lane knew, and the players told us this. Jackson Dart told us this um, that that the players were like, "Well, what the hell is this report?" Like they weren't too happy about it. So Lane, what he did was was attend that meeting on Tuesday to tell them, guys, I haven't taken a job. I haven't taken anything. I would tell you if I had. And so that kind of, you know, quieted that down. But it wasn't an emergency team meeting like like it was reported. And the translation, before we move on, Ole Miss is at eight and a half. Auburn's at nine. If I get Ole Miss to nine, then I will say that I, I was never leaving in the first place. There you go. Leverage, baby. You don't have anything unless you have leverage in any industry, really. (laughs) So Lane Kiffin, check one. We'll get out of that. Let's now turn our attention to what that means. Because I I love talking coaching stuff with you and kind of industry stuff. Because now that Lane Kiffin's out, it would appear, based on reports, and it's possible we're recording this at 11 a.m. on Sunday, this could happen long after it's posted. But it would appear that Hugh Freeze is now – 
the, I don't want to say leading candidate, but one of the top candidates for the Auburn vacancy because Lane Kiffin is not. No to the audience. And I know sometimes we get too inside baseball, but the second the, the Kiffin story is out that he's staying, the next story comes out that that, that Hugh, Hugh Freeze is next in line. Now, where does that come from? Does Hugh Freeze call up these reporters? No, that's Sexton. He represents Hugh Freeze too. So Sexton throws that one out there trying to force Auburn into a corner. And there, there's you know, and then what what happens, Matt? Hugh Freeze's team goes out and lays the biggest egg, I think, of the year in college football. I don't even remember the team they lost to. Um, but New Mexico, is it New Mexico, Mexico State? Mexico State, uh, yeah. They were 20-something oh, I mean, point favorites and got absolutely pummeled. <laughs> and, yeah, that's, I mean, I, I mean, we talked about Hugh Freeze month, uh, weeks ago when they beat uh, BYU in Arkansas, and then they just fall apart down the stretch. Why? I'm sure because Hugh Freeze is rumored to be leaving. And then some of the people at, at Liberty were yelling yesterday, good Auburn coach. Uh, I mean, th that's how bad things have gotten. Uh, and he does not come into Auburn clean. Uh, I mean, there's some people that, that really are going, okay, so you, you tried that. You almost fired uh, Brian Hartson a couple of months ago because of all these rumors. And now you're bringing in Hugh Freeze. What's going on here? He's, He's still a very good coach. We yes. all hey, repeat after me. He beat Nick Saban two years in a row. Okay, we all know that. Um, he's coaching the SEC. He got fired uh, for a lot of reasons, and 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 I bring all that up to say none of that matters anymore to anyone because this is a new era in college football. So he limps into the job, assuming it's him. If it's not him, Matt, your guess would be as good as mine. Yeah, because look, here's how I attack these things after last year's hiring cycle when no one saw Lincoln Riley coming and no one saw Brian Kelly coming. No one. No. Here's how I attack these things. Now Hugh freeze. I've said it before. You've mentioned it before. It's, it's a logical hiring. Although the juxtaposition of the new AD Cohen who came from Mississippi state while right. the Hugh freeze mess was going on and all it's, 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 it's a little wonky, but here's what I'll say. I believe that is that that timing's right, isn't it? With uh, Cohen and Mississippi State, so it all kind of jives in there. But until someone's named, I would not throw out the possibility of a surprise yeah. big hire at Auburn because a hire has yet to be made. Yeah, and there are a lot of names making the rounds, and we'll spare you because I mean, it's, it, as Matt reiterated, and and you know, we we could do this at midnight, but we like to, we like to do this in the morning to get it to you. So you can uh, digest it while you're still thinking about last weekend. Uh, so that, that's what we know. And, and we, and what we know is about the same as you probably knew before you turned this podcast on, but you know, should he be introduced on Monday? It will go over. Well, the Cadillac train crashed yesterday in Tuscaloosa. It was, a, it, was a, it was a great run. Everyone loves him. Everyone uh, now has made Cadillac uh, Williams a lot of money on the new coaching staff. But that, that story is over. Would you stay if you were Cadillac? If, let's say, Hugh comes in, would you stay or would you try to forge your own path? Now that you've proved – look, I'll say the, the interim coach is the backup quarterback. He's the most popular yeah. guy because he's not the guy that you fired. I'm just curious if, if Cadillac want, wants to stay on. Yeah, I don't know. And, and there's – I mean, the safest bet uh, on the board over the next couple of days is that he will be retained or have the, have the opportunity. You, that's part of the deal. When you're all, let's say it's Hugh Freeze, coach, you'll be the new coach. You'll make however much money and you will keep Cadillac Williams. You go, and Oh I'm, yeah, sure. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, yeah. I'm just happy to be back in. I got it. And you, <laughs> and you, and you mentioned the iron bowl look on the field, 15th consecutive year, Alabama's had a 10 plus win season or 10 win season. That's the record in modern college football. Yet yesterday's iron bowl, you were there for sec. It, it, it hadn't, it had nothing. No, no. Uh, Matt, and I've only been to about 40 of these, okay? So it's not like I have a good track record of being around Iron Bowls. But, uh, I mean, the, the last two have just had no atmosphere whatsoever. Last year, maybe a little bit more in Auburn because – and, 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 we, and we were not – nobody knew it would be a four-overtime game. But this year, it just had nothing going for it. Uh, absolutely nothing. And, and for good reason. Uh, and what I what, what what I took away after this game wasn't that Alabama beat the spread or depending on where you got the where you got the line, um, 
It was about opportunity loss. And, and yeah, I, we all, we'll, we'll get to it in a second. Alabama has the slimmest margin to get back in, and only Alabama could figure out a way to do that. Um, but it just, I just got this hollow feeling as, as Bryce Young and Will Anderson walked off the field that this, that this team should have been going to Atlanta. This team should have been competing in the playoffs. And as a result, they're having, you know, they're like, they're like beggars <laughs> hanging outside waiting for a food crumb uh, to see if, if Southern Cal loses and then they beat the statistical battle of, 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 of insanity against Ohio State. Yeah, we're, we're definitely going to parlay that and, and discuss it in a minute. I want to kind of weave through some of the other stuff that happened because you had mentioned Alabama not going to Atlanta. That is because LSU, a three-loss team, is the first one to clinch – a few weeks ago to play in the SEC championship, their prize, the Georgia Bulldogs. And going into yesterday's game, I said it in studio with Jesse and, and Joey. I said, Les Miles and Ed Orgeron coached LSU teams. This was before the kickoff. I said, if those coach teams had look out against Texas A&M, this doesn't feel right. I could see them getting tripped up. And no way did I think a Brian Kelly coach team would allow what happened to happen yesterday, which is going to Tech College Station and getting absolutely thumped by a Texas A&M team that's wildly underperformed. Yeah, and, and I listen, I, I didn't hear many people predict it, so it's not like uh, this is the I told you so. But, I mean, for weeks, though, there's just been this uneasy feeling that, uh, or, or unusual feeling that, that Jimbo Fisher would figure out a way uh, to do this. And, and I was with Tebow yesterday and, 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 and Jordan Rogers, and they both said something interesting. They said, when Jimbo Fisher is interested in the game, he, he dials up a great game plan. He did it for Alabama, came down to a final play. I, and that, I think we may have just, Jimbo just gets bored easily against just the minor teams like, like Ole Miss and Mississippi state, uh, who I think both have beaten him two years in a row. Um, this, this was a, a bad matchup, uh, just from an emotional standpoint, I think for Brian Kelly, his team look, probably looking ahead, everything clinched. And I think we also, LSU got exposed for not being an elite team. Uh, they just didn't handle the moment. And that does not portend for a compelling SEC championship game. No, I mean, that's another topic we'll get into here in a second. But they, they got up as high as five in the college football playoff committee rankings for a couple of reasons, a lot of which people still didn't understand. But look, these are 18 to 21-year-old not kids, but young adults, it's human nature. Oh, we're playing in the SEC championship next week against the top ranked team in the country. We can roll the ball out and beat this sorry A&M team. Well, the problem with that is and it has been so bad this year. This was their bowl game. They're not going to a bowl game. This was their opportunity to ride off into the off season, feeling good about what's going on there in college station for Jimbo to be like, see, I told you so we've got heart. We've got talent, which is what he did in the post game interviews everywhere. He kept talking about all this outside noise, outside noise. Well, I know inside my locker room, these guys were still hungry and playing for each other. Yeah, that's good to put out to the public. But if they were playing for each other, they wouldn't have ended the season, what, four and eight or whatever, five and seven, whatever they were? Yeah, they ended up five and seven. Uh, they lost, I think, six games at one point. Um, their, their, their SEC wins were over Arkansas and, and LSU, and they lost everything else. And it, it was a... I don't know. I mean, Jimbo's the king of spin, so he'll he'll figure out a way to turn this into a to a, a really good season. Guys never quit. Uh, and and what it really did, though, uh, it it dinged up LSU for anyone who was trying to live off of that game. Uh, Tennessee was living off of it for a long time. That's that's a mood point now. Alabama's trying to live off of it. It didn't help them. Um, and and in in the at the very end, uh, LSU. Uh, LSU will still have a very good season, but it, it's going to be difficult to get over the what I think will be two straight losses to end it. Yeah, and and look, and that who better and what better situation to have your Brian Kelly first year as a head coach? Say, hey, in my first year, we did just enough to play for the SEC championship, but we're still not close to being good enough to win the SEC because now you look at that matchup, and all due respect to your network, and it's it's like, all right. Well, here's what I would say. It's better than the ACC game. So that's the other one. Not, <laughs> well, I've said this forever, and I'll say it here. Unless every conference gets rid of divisions, yeah, that's conference the problem. championships are awful. 
Clemson, North Carolina. Oh. The Big Ten Championship, Purdue and Michigan. Like, what, like, what, what are we doing? But, but, but here's the issue, though. Uh, when you have the games like the end of the seasons, do you want to see Michigan, Ohio State back to back weeks after? Uh, I mean, that's a, that's a weird one, I think, though. And, and I, I agree with you, but you have to figure that out and then do your scheduling perhaps a lot different. And, and by the way, I think we all know everyone's going to that formula here probably in two years when all the changes take place in college football. But uh, there's some really sorry conference championship games this weekend. I mean, it should be a great weekend. It, it, right. Championship weekend should be a great weekend. And, and even – if you peel it back, I think honestly the most entertaining one is going to be the Big Twelve with TCU yeah. and Kansas State, and even that's a three-loss Kansas State team. And I just want to say because I, I I said something once that people may may have taken too seriously. I cannot wait to watch the Big Twelve championship game. Uh, I, I really can't. I've, I've been quoted as saying I I really didn't care about it, and the country didn't care. That now game day is going, and you'll be talking about it and leading into it. I'm aren't you? I, I'm all in. I, I wish I could go. You? Let's go. You know what? Maybe we could take the college football YouTube channel <laughs> to the Big 12 championship and just give the hypno toad all of the respect that it deserves. Um, yesterday, we, we talked about Michigan and Ohio State because here comes the crux of every argument moving forward. You have the playoff picture clearing up a little bit, LSU out again. Clemson's out again after that. I, I do want oh. to talk about that in a minute. But now you have Ohio State who was there. Okay, I'm going to say it this way. Go ahead. Give me one team outside of Michigan and 50%, 75% of Penn State in the Big Ten that makes a Big Ten resume an automatic bid to the playoff outside of winning the conference championship. You can't. And and somebody asked me this morning, what's what's Ohio, what's Ohio State's best win? And it's not even debatable. It's Penn State. And at the time, it seemed like who cares? Um, you Notre Dame's got four losses now. You can't you can't pin on that yeah. one. Yeah. But I'm sure they'll argue back, Matt, that hey, Alabama lost twice, but. Uh, they have five losses between those. Uh, I mean, that's how stupid this is right now that we're going. But I and I know we're we're you know I think we're pushing toward the twelve pretty soon. Uh, but it's pretty crazy when we're struggling here to to fill the field. But I yeah, and I just want to know why. And I'm going to pull this up here. When did and I I said this as much yesterday on 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 Twitter. So Paul, you know that it's official when I say it on Twitter. I do. When did we get to the point where? We just assume, oh, the Big Ten, Michigan, Ohio State, two versus three, loser gets in. When did we get to that point? Because here's Ohio State's schedule. All right. Notre Dame, eight and four. Arkansas State, Toledo, Wisconsin, who lost yesterday. I think they finished the season six and six. Rutgers, who got shut out against Maryland. Michigan okay. State, Iowa, Penn State. Northwestern, who finished one and eleven, Indiana, Maryland, Michigan, and congratulations to what NBC, uh, CBS, all the all the new networks who get to show those games in the future. I just I I don't know what where in college football do we get to the point where well some of it is propaganda and and that everybody thinks ESPN is SEC bias. Uh, and Fox is Big Ten bias, but I, I, I try to be objective. I know people laugh when I say that. I know you do um, because you're hosting a national show, but you listen to uh, a Fox game and you don't think anything else exists. And then, and then Kevin Warren, who really has had a good year as the Big Ten commissioner, you know, he gives that interview to Pete Dalmo yesterday. He says, oh, the Big Ten absolutely deserves to. And, okay, I know that's your job, but, but why don't you – Give it, give it a little time. I mean, I, there was a moment I was watching the game on a plane, Matt. So uh, maybe, maybe it was the altitude. I mean, there was a moment when I thought, you know what? These are the two, two of the four best teams in the country. It felt like that until the, until Ohio State once again completely rolled over and died in the in the in the fourth quarter. When you look at the rankings, all all people have to do. I know it. It's a lot, and it takes a lot of energy. 
pull up the rankings. There are three Big Ten teams ranked. That's yeah. it. Michigan, Ohio State, Penn State. That's it. So someone sell me. Like the Pac-12 has what, six? USC, Oregon, Washington, Utah, Oregon State. I mean, that statistically is the second best conference in college football, and it's really not in dispute. So if we look at the rankings now, because you brought it up, LSU is ranked fifth. They are going to fall out of that. They'll probably be down somewhere at 10. They'll have to be above Tennessee because they – oh, no, they'll be below Tennessee because Tennessee beat them pretty handily. So USC, the new top four will be in some order, uh, Georgia, Michigan, TCU, USC. Those are going to be your top four. Five at this point is likely going to be Alabama. Ohio State's probably going to be six or five or six. That's going to be the big argument. But at this point, Paul, I think TCU should get in even if they lose. Michigan, I, I, I just don't know where the argument well, here, is here. Next yeah, week. I mean, the, the problem comes down to, and, and this is going to be the debate all week, because quite, quite frankly, there, there's nothing else to debate. Uh, so is it Alabama or is it Ohio State? Uh, For which part? Well, Paul? well, I guess this is if, 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 if Southern Cal loses. Okay. Because if that, if that doesn't happen, there's nothing, Matt, good luck next Sunday with all your cronies in, in Bristol. Uh, what are you going to talk about for 18 hours? Yeah, I don't know. Um, because let, I don't know. Because you look at this, Clemson could have been a real headache for them, but they went and spit the bit against Shane Beamer in South Carolina, which, by the way, credit to Shane Beamer, two top 10 wins in back-to-back weeks for the first time in program history. I mean, that was a hell of a win for them. That that was the story that probably deserves the most amount of conversation um, because we're not just talking about a big – I mean, last week, pull out of that whatever you want. Uh, And I'm talking about the win over Tennessee. But this was at Clemson. Yep. against a team that was top five beginning of the season, I'm pretty sure. Um, and it also, to me, just further I- enhances the, the perception that Dabo's dynasty is done. And I'm sorry. I've been saying that now for two years. He made some very big calls in the offseason, and we're still, see, we're, we're still looking to see the development of, of not going outside for coordinators and staying inside and by the way he, he now has a, most of most most of the, some of the guys that have left are available again so it'll be interesting to see whether one of them comes back but the point being that Clemson really could have backed into all this uh whether they deserved it or not and I don't think they did suddenly all these games that, that, that were big remember the remember the double overtime went over Wake Forest that doesn't look so hot anymore does it um so but but you can't you can't I mean the, the fact that Dabo Sweeney Lost at home is a huge deal. The fact that he lost for the first time since 2013 to South Carolina. And where in the world did this South Carolina team come from? I realize they're not in the national conversation. They lost to Florida two weeks and a day ago. Uh, I mean, they got run out. They got, they got destroyed out. by – yeah, destroyed by Florida. And they lost to Missouri. I mean, they had, there's a couple yeah. losses, but and, – and where did this Spencer Rattler come from? I mean, this kid – he threw a pick six wow. early yesterday. They were down 14 nothing. Give him a lot of credit for coming back on the road. First time Clemson's lost in Death Valley in 40 games, snapping their 40-game yeah. home winning streak. But to Dabo, it's – he and the, the Jeff Scott's the one you're referring to. He's fired at USF. He was a Clemson coordinator forever. Tony Elliott's at Virginia. Brent Venables just wrapped up a really bad first season at Oklahoma. Oh. And – DJ Uwe Ungalale is not, that's, he's not it. I mean, the guy had 99 yards and interception and a touchdown yesterday. And what it looks like, remember when Dabo was winning now, Paul, there was Deshaun Watson, all timer, and there was Trevor Lawrence, all timer. Yeah. Well, yeah. I mean, he, he had a similar run that, that Saban has had with Jalen Hurts, Tua. Mac Jones and Bryce Young, except he just compressed them into two guys as opposed to four guys, one of which got beat out for the job uh, his, his final year uh, at Alabama. So, yeah, it's uh, and, and, and by no means am I suggesting that uh, this isn't a good program. It is. It's just I, I think it's and I think Clemson has some issues on NIL, too, that they they need to re- re- readdress. I know they are, but uh, they, they've, they've fallen behind a little bit. And 
And I think they'll have a hard way back to the to the elite level of the well, I was about to say Ohio State, <laughs> Michigan, <laughs> Alabama, Georgia, Southern Cal. Would Auburn make a run at Clemp or at uh, Dabo? I I don't think he would be interested. Uh, I mean, he's just got such a good situation there right now. And, and, and as we're talking, I see Luke Fickle now being targeted by Wisconsin. That's a guy who uh, – Luke's a name you heard in, in every coaching search. Wow. So uh, that was Pete Thamel reporting that. So uh, I, I just happened to catch my phone as, as, we, as we were chatting here. So – and, 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 again, the Auburn situation, I think I would keep your eye on that as the day goes on. There's a lot of pushback at the moment that could change but uh, you know back to Dabo uh, I don't think I mean people I, I've always wondered if Dabo couldn't be uh, interested in the NFL for some reason I, 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 no, mean, I, I think he, no 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 uh, I think he's had his fill of this uh, professional football in college though uh, I mean I, I know where you're coming from Matt but yeah. <laughs> uh, he's he's having a tough time though right now with what's yeah. going on but that act you know how act you know how quick that act would wear thin in the NFL the third day of training camp maybe like, like maybe NFL players putting in all in chips into a bucket no that look and you look here you bring it up NFL David Shaw who resigned in right. the cover of night I think there were five of us awake for that he said it like, think about this for a minute he said I came up in the NFL which is odd since he's been at Stanford forever but he said yeah. in the NFL there's an off season you get a life college football coaches there's there's no life anymore for these guys none there's also a point and and i think it's so remarkable that saban has been at alabama 15 16 years dabo has been there since 2008 as the head coach you wear out uh and, and i mean I, I was talking to a young student uh friday in tuscaloosa and the guy said you know saban's old now <laughs> I mean, yeah everybody knows that but you've never been able to say that before uh, and, and suddenly you lose a couple of games and Dabo has now lost uh, the biggest game of the year. Uh, you, and Dabo's not old, but suddenly you just say like you, you get tired of the guy uh, and it, it happens. And that's why coaches move and, and, and get frustrated as they after they've been someplace for a very long time. All right. So two other topics now as, as we get you out of here in our regular season wrap up. Um, I'm, I'm reading this story now. And because it's happening while we're taping, I want to peel back on this because I find this to be absolutely fascinating. And I would be stunned if Luke Fickle wasn't the head coach at Wisconsin by the end of Sunday. Yeah, you, you know that la last year he, he got stuck. All the big jobs came open and he couldn't take them because he was in the playoffs. Notre Dame being the top of them. Exactly. And... I was beginning to, I mean, I call me crazy, but as I was watching the fourth quarter yesterday, I was beginning to wonder if maybe they got rid of Luke Fickle too quickly um, <laughs> back back during the year of the interim coach. Cause I mean, he really has blossomed into a, an elite coach uh, and, and, and we'll save the Ryan day conversation for another day. But I, I do think Luke Fickle is a great fit uh, at Wisconsin. I mean, I think he can, he can elevate that program immensely. It is Mike, and, and look, he's a Big Ten guy. For those that are saying, oh, Cincinnati, going to the Big 12. Sorry, he's a Big Ten guy. I'll take it one step further with Fickle. I want to move on to another coaching situation. Because Jim Leonard, and, and, if they, and if they end up pulling this off, if Wisconsin pulls this off, they did it responsibly because here's what they did. They took a team from Paul Christ who had talent. They've done well with talent. They had always ID'd Jim Leonard as the coach of the future. They gave him an opportunity. I think they gave him six games, was it? And he didn't get it done. They could, I think, move on in good conscience saying, here was our coach, Paul Christ. Here was our guy that we thought could take us into the future. We gave him an opportunity. It's time for us to move on outside. Well said. No, I mean, he, yeah, he had a fair shot. And, and I know sometimes people will say, well, you're inheriting something. Well, Dabo Sweeney did that. Uh, made the most out of it. Some guys do, some guys don't. You can, you may not have your final answer uh, during an interim stay, but you 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 know a lot, uh, and that's why it's it's it is the that's why I think it does make sense to get rid of the coach quickly uh, when when he's failing. This is fascinating to me. I'm I didn't even think for a second about Luke Fickle at Wisconsin. This reminds me of you mentioned it, Luke Fickle when he got his interim shot at Ohio State, didn't get the job. 
a la Jim Leonard. This is just like that. And then Luke had to go get his own head coaching job to get his head coaching chops up, which I assume Jim Leonard will probably want to do if Luke Fickle is named the head coach. So this is a fascinating story. I'm sure we'll, we'll have uh, other tentacles throughout the afternoon. Finally, this one, it was so weird how this came about that rumor, rumor, rumor. And then Matt rules on college game day talking about how he's going to rebuild Nebraska. I don't know how the hell that changed so quickly. Cause I've had conversations with those very connected to rule who said he kind of wanted to sit a cycle out. And within the matter of, four or five days that changed and now he's tasked with bringing back Nebraska. I think uh, talking to people that know Matt rule, I, I, I don't know him that well, although he lives a couple of blocks from me. Um, he, uh, the point being, he got restless. I mean, he, he, he was at home six weeks. Uh, and Has it been six? I mean, it, I think, yeah, easily. Um, and five to six. Yeah. I, I couldn't pinpoint the exact date, but, he got tired. I mean, these guys like to, I mean, you work with these coaches, Matt, you see them every weekend. Uh, they don't like to sit around. Uh, they'll take a job at a high school the next day as soon as they get fired. That's how, but how, that's, that's how they're made. And his name got connected to the Auburn job, which I never could believe. It got connected to another job. I, I had a friend call me over the weekend, uh, call me Friday and say, Hey, I hear Matt rules going to be in college station this week and i said slow down i mean come on um and fortunately before i told anybody i saw that he was going to nebraska so i wasn't embarrassed like i i will be now by telling you um but that's how crazy it is so i don't think uh, the money I mean, he'll he he'll figure out that they'll figure out the money deal with the panthers uh he'll, how he'll, does that he'll work be- by the way we were talking about that in studio because i think the panthers were on the hook for 36 million i believe it. so so anyone paul i don't know about you if, I, if someone owed me $36 million to do nothing, guess what I'm going to do? And I'm a mo- I'm an aspirational person. I don't care how yeah. much I love. So how does that work with the money now that he'll be on Nebraska's payroll, but he's still owed? I, I think it, I think it's measured against. Uh, so I, 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 this is a quick read. I, I'm not a, I'm not a CPA, but I, I think, I think the Panthers get off good. Uh, because he got the job and and so because so, someone wrote earlier that they they gambled on that figuring that if, if he got fired uh somebody would pick him up pretty quickly and his reputation in college was never dinged no up question. by the fact that he, he was a complete failure in the nfl yeah so this will be a interesting one to watch because he's a program builder if he can get temple to win football games and baylor after the near death penalty they had with their program i i like the hire for for uh, nebraska uh, the Wisconsin stuff is fascinating. It's unfortunate we didn't get too much on the football side of it because we had to go coaching throughout the day today just because that's been the big storylines. But here we go. We embark on championship weekend. And a week from today will be about 25 minutes to an hour away from knowing who's going to be in the college football playoff. It was a year ago this coming week that uh, the two biggest bombshells in college football happened in recent years. That was – Lincoln Riley to Southern Cal and Brian Kelly to LSU. And look how those programs turned out. Both of them, at least for the entirety of the season until yesterday, have been in the college football playoff conversation. And USC is the only one remains, which is to say head coaching matters in college football. And both of those teams appear to have gotten it right. Paul, what a journey this has been. I'm sure at some point we'll find a way to catch up next week. Um, But as always, a regular season for the ages and can't wait to do more of this with you. Thank you, Matt. It's been my pleasure. Thanks for watching ESPN on YouTube. For live streaming sports and premium content, subscribe to ESPN+.